production by 40 percentage. Sir, we are so privileged to have you as the first speaker for our day. Please welcome. Good morning. So I need not tell about myself, like already it's been briefed. Uh, it's good to be here, just to brief on principles and practices of uh, nutraceuticals, formulations and product development. The uh, contents we are going to discuss today, uh, introduction to nutraceuticals. So what are nutraceuticals and types of nutraceuticals and important aspects of nutraceuticals, identification, characterization and standardization. Also important aspects in nutraceutical formulation and product development. Challenges in nutraceuticals formulations and regulation certifications and also we are going to see uh, Prakriti production facility too. Maybe at the end of the, there is a link so we can get on to see the facility. It's getting stuck. It's not moving. So introduction to nutraceuticals, like what are nutraceuticals? It is, these are all non-toxic food components extracted from foods that scientifically establish potential health benefits for diseases treatment and diseases prevention. 
So the nutraceuticals are alternative to allopathic drugs. It's called lifestyle drugs. So these are all natural origin, processed food, and medical health benefits. So various nutraceuticals like dietary supplements, micronutrients, and food functional products, polyphenols, terpenoids, glycosinides, there are many more like this. And types of nutraceuticals. Dietary supplements, fortified foods, functional foods, and medical foods. Like what are all those in detail? The dietary supplements are the products that is intended to supplement the diet and contains one or more vitamins, minerals, herb, and other botanicals. Also amino acids, metabolites, the extract or combination of above all these. And fortified foods, the enriched with vitamins and minerals, usually at range of 100% of the dietary reference intake for the nutrient. It is mandated by the law to be fortified to level up that replaces nutrients lost during the processing, as adding B, vitamins, to many baked foods. The breakfast cereals is the food category that has been fortified since 1940. See, earlier we used to take just wheat. So now you can see wheat powders, wheat, like enriched with proteins, nutrients, calcium, minerals, and also like cereals enriched with the proteins. And what are the functional foods? Like functional foods or any food or food ingredient that may provide a health benefit beyond the traditional nutrient it contains. Okay. Traditional nutrients refers to vitamins, minerals, and proteins. Okay, what is a medical food? The medical foods refer to the food formulated to be consumed or administered internally while under the supervision of practice physician. Okay, the important aspects of cosmeceutical. Nutraceuticals like standardization. Can I move this? Um, photo? Can, can I move this? So botanical sources and scientific information. So like I'm going to brief you like two slides will give the maximum information like how we develop the product before developing, how we identify the molecules in the nature and then it's environmental changes like reason to reason, season to season, the constituents and active molecule will vary. So similarly, these two slides will have the maximum information. Please note down and anything questions, please let me know later. So botanical sources and scientific information. The botanicals, the herb or plant material which is available in the nature. Okay, it is from the reason to reason and season to season it will vary. So botanical resources and scientific information. See, uh, this allopathic, you all know uh, the English medicine it is called. Uh, it is like, I can say like 800 years or 900 years back it is came in. But the nutraceuticals, the nutrients or dietary supplements, whatever the different names we have given, it is there in the Ayurveda more than 5,000 years back. Okay, Ayurveda is known in India and the, in the world, India is the second biggest place for the nutraceuticals or Ayurvedic medicines. China is in first place. Okay? So when we eat food at home, 
there are so many nutrients is there in our breakfast or lunch or dinner okay in india we are blessed to have so many nutraceuticals if you go to developed countries like europe and uh, japan us okay they eat only wheat products maximum okay how we do in our food for the lunch so many varieties of curries so they take so many varieties of capsules that is in nutraceuticals okay now the business is happening in the name of the trade earlier people used to come to india and loot the the ayurvedic like spices and they consume okay so the importance of botanicals of india many of us we don't know there is a saying itil geda maddalla antare okay namma nammalli ro medicine so we don't know even ourselves we don't know the capability of ourselves sometimes so we are resourced with so many nutraceuticals so many resources there is a lot to explore there is a lot to do research on nutraceuticals it's explored only i can say 10% there is remaining 90% there is a scope for in food processing or nutraceuticals there is a lot to explore okay. then botanical sourcing and scientific information so we have to identify the hard because there are so many synonyms so many botanical resources and the contents will vary from one source to other source one reason to another reason example i'll tell you cinnamon we all know indian cinnamon it's called cassia the seed it's called jailanicum how different it is many people won't be knowing but cinnamon jailanicum from the cinnamon is hazardous to health okay. so across the globe when the developed countries are cinnamon no they expect only jailanicum we know we are using from the day one we might be got adjusted to the cumarin content what is available in the indian cassia so like that there is a variety so you have to identify the botanical and then scientific resources and then proceed for the next and growth and environmental conditions again the, the herb and impurity in that are active principle in that it varies from environment to environment the raw metal processing collection and specifications so before making the product the quality starts from the raw material any raw material when we collect harvesting there should be a good agricultural practices good harvesting practices because the raw material will start get contaminating from the harvesting stage for example if you harvest the material when you bring it to warehouse before processing it it gets contaminants of microbial fungal growth the fungal growth will excretes gives the some other nutrient means contaminants for example micro toxins okay so the preservation of starting material and specific methodology okay after control like you have to follow the cgmp regulations and there are specific equipments for the processing and before coming to commercial we have to do the research uh, development in the r and d scale it has to undergo various steps sometimes in the process it can decompose it can convert into another metabolite so the process development it should be in such a way it should not decompose or it should not convert but into some other molecule also we have to preserve Okay. maybe you might know nature has given many things in the same it take a herb it is not the one molecule responsible for the biological activity it is a synergic effect of the remaining other metabolites in the extract or herb Okay. and we have to standardize the content for example the dose dependent we have to standardize the strength of the active molecule it make it contaminant during the control uh, active principle as well as the impurity profile impurities means the safety the safety what and all impurities for the unsafe for example heavy metals can come like mercury cadmium there are four heavy metals and mycotoxins 
on pathogens, biological, microbiological contaminations. Okay? And stability. After making the pure form of the extract or any nutraceutical, you have to check the stability of that molecule. Maybe it is in the form of or leaf, fruit, root. It might be stable. After taking out, is it stable? You have to study the stability analysis. Okay? And then final product, storage and shelf life. Any product after making the intermediate stage or formulation, you have to check for the stability and storage conditions. It has to be stored at the right room temperature or stored cold condition. And shelf life. Self life will tell you after making the pure formulation how many days it will take to consume or when it will get expired. That stability data will give the complete data. And this is about the developing the product. And our developing the product, like evidence is based on the practices. And purpose, frequency, period of uses. Okay, how frequently, how many days you can use that track? Like, is there is a limited? When you go to doctor, they prescribe only take one week or 10 tablets. Beyond that, it may not be advisable to go. And bioavailability, pharmacokinetics profiles. And first effect. Maybe when you are taking one track, is it to take other medicine? So those are all we have to study before getting into the market. And epidemiology data. It's like one medicine when you make epidemiology, like one area, how many people, where you are done. It may be good for India. It has it good for, for, for example, what whatever wheat we do, we consume. It is an allergen for the US and European people. They won't eat wheat like other than allergens. Okay. And not we do more allergens. We do use more allergens in India, but not in other countries. Many of us, we don't know what are the allergens. Even for the milk, many people, it is allergen. Okay. So clinical risk assessment and experimental human studies and clinical data. These are all being done at the ingredient developed stage, also in the formulation stage. So the previous slide, it was known for the, what are the ingredients? So once you make the ingredient, which gets into formulation to make a capsule, okay? So when you make a capsule, what are the things to be monitored and developed? Keep things in mind to control the make a good product, okay? So quality related safety issues of the ingredient and then formulation and development. Any molecule, when you make into form, nutraceutical molecule, you have to consider many um, things like it's like to make it more bioavailable, like you have to use certain experience or it depends on the application, whether it is going into neutra or it is going to beverage or it is going to like uh, medicine and it based on the solubility of the molecule, the formulation need to be taken care. And sometimes if it is a poor bio you have to use certain excipients like excipients also we can make more like tablets, capsules, soft gels, disposable nanotechnology. Now there are many new new methods are there to make it more bioavailable. So during the formulation, you have to consider all those parameters. And herb and drug interactions. And safety toxicity profile of the Regulatory aspects, okay? So now many uh, natural resources, endangered species, it comes under regulation. It's not that anybody can make anywhere and bring it to the market. So there is a lot of regulatory issues are there. And pharma, pharmacovigilances, and then risk assessment, IPR final product. So once you make the product, you have to go for patenting to safeguard your uh, research. Mm -hmm. Global market again. Global market like, mm -hmm. like you should find where it is useful, which country, which area. All those things come into play. And chemo analysis, metabolic profiling. Chemo analysis means like statistical data. When you do trials, like what is the dose dependent? LD50, So those are all it depicts the variation quantity in the consumption. And ah. Yes, like determinations. The adaptation is the one now more into the market. Like, for example, caffeine is available in the coffee and the 
Caffeine natural source, if it is a cost of 3000 rupees, means there is a synthetic caffeine is available, it's at 300 rupees. So it is cheaper. So when the adult drink, it is easy to get into market. Normal people cannot make out. But it is easy to find out when we do uh, fingerprinting, um, there is a uh, carbon dating analysis. We can make out whether it is synthetic or natural. Metabolite fingerprinting. Metabolite means, like I was telling you, no, like, uh, for example, lycopene, I'll give an example. The tomato, when it is green color, it's not in the form of lycopene, it's in a different mode. And when it turns into red or orange, the other metabolite converts into lycopene. So you take any fruit, any herbs, it's not the one molecule, maybe one it is enriched with that, we call it as active principle. But those herbs contain many metabolites, similar molecules, maybe it is in a different form. And the standardization of the herbs. So if you have to standardize like many active principles. Maybe one person might have done the PhD, like maybe focusing on one or two ingredients. There will be many more that nature gives in the metabolic forms. And quality consistency. Like as I said, the raw materials available in the season to this season, reason to reason, it will vary the quality. So to get consistency in raw material. The source. You have to monitor very closely. Like that's why good agricultural practices are in place. Maybe in India, it is not much implemented. If you go to Israel, Israel is known for good agricultural practices. Of course, developed countries, China, US, it's been implemented, but we are yet to start in India. And stability of the formulations. Like when you make a tablet, the stability of the active principle depends on the excipients which you use. We say all excipients are neutral, in, inactive, but some of the like magnesium carbonate, many people we use. But uh -huh. the principle is it is an acid, for example, benzoic acid or boxulic acid. Sometimes uh -huh. these acids interact with the few excipients. So you have to choose the excipients brilliantly to not to interact with the prep. Uh -huh. And challenges in nutraceutical formulations. The key challenge is to objectively assess conflict in toxicology, epidemiology, and other data, the verification of herbal materials used. The metabolites are complex with multiple chemical components, can contain up to 50 ingredients. 70 to 90 percent of the formula can be active. Botanicals and extracts can vary based on the reason the crop was grown, season grown in other factors. Generally, large, dose, large doses per daily survey. Meat like aromatic drugs is natural or nutritional or like one gram, two gram per tablet per time because the natural products are bioavailability is very less because of various reasons. That's why we have to consume in the higher dose. Uh, and understanding why the addition of harmful additives works evaluating the interactions and constraints with the clinical trials and people availability. And standardization, safety and efficacy, assessment, shelf life. These are all the challenges in the field now. And drug adulteration, imperfect preparation of incorrect storage that already I discussed. And group grass substitution with the plant material. And uh, substitution for the drug. Substitution means like now there are few endangered species are there, which is getting extinguished. So we are looking for the alternative medicine. For example, Tamilia, Archuna, and uh, Pterocarpus marsupium. These are all very well known for diabetic. So now, uh, the consumption has gone up in the world. So those are all under the endangered species. Even sandal is becoming endangered species. So there is a government putting the restriction. Okay? And also to minimum use of in the industry, they are restricting if they use that kind of material. The company which uses those raw material, they have to pay 0.3% to the biodiversity board. So that... that the identity, as I said, fingerprint recent or DNA, we have to check. Otherwise, there can be a lot of adulterations. 
and purity, strength, composition, and when you make a tablet, hardness, pliability. Validated and environment should be monitored. There are CGMP means when you visit the facility, you will understand what are the procedures. Okay. And more challenges for the global. Formulation, it's like a registration category. Each country has their own registrations. Even US may not accept. Like you know, and ingredients, the formula may fit into different categories by country. Maybe we may call it as a food, as the other country, they may call it as a drug or it is a neutral. Depends not uniform. For example, in India, the microbial load accepted up to one lakh for the food products. Medicines, the TMC, TOMC, the load is accepted up to 5,000. When it comes to Japan, they want it only up to 3,000. So the limits will be country to country. The few regulations in the process of developing product are into market. These are the one like World Health Organizations, FSSAI, it is in India. And Ayush is there, British Pharmacopoeia, US Pharmacopoeia, European Pharmacopoeia, China, China GB, National Standards, Japan Pharmacopoeia, Codex, ICH, Korea, HFF Codex, Japan Pass 2. There are many more, just few I have mentioned. These are the regulations our food comes under, our nutraceutical comes under this. And there are certifications. Like whenever you make the product, your facility, people, environment, everything should be certified. So there are certifications like FSSC 22,000. Earlier it was FSC. Now the latest version is called FESMA regulations. It's been updated version is FSSC 22,000 5.1 version. So this certifies the facility, people, equipment, environment taken care. And ISO standardization, GMO free certification, alarm and caution. This is the alarm and kosher, it's all, both are almost same. The kosher is by Jewish and alarm is for the Islamic countries. The water compliances. So water compliances, the many natural ingredients has certain impurities, which, which is works on as a uh, narcotics. Okay? Narcotics are banned, but some narcotics as a metabolite form, it is there. When you take uh, certain steroids, natural steroids. The metabolite, like water banned steroids are there. So those need to be controlled. When you when you send like few countries like Europe and all, no, they check all these things. Maybe India, no one is going to check, but other countries definitely they check for the impurity profile. So what a world anti-doping agency is called water. And the few nutraceuticals, like it is just to let you know. Uh, nutraceuticals consumed maximum in capsule form. The 64% capsules are formed, tablets 63%, soft gels 42%, and chewable 28%, liquid 23%, soft chew 17%. These are all the various mode of nutraceuticals. Why, why not only single mode? For example, capsules may, be, may not be bioavailable more at certain age, certain people. The chewable capsules for the kids, it easily get into the body, it will be easily available. So when it is poorly available in the bioavailable in the body, the, as I mentioned earlier, the nanotechnology is there and disposables are there and soft gel capsules are there. It's in the various mode to absorb better in the body. Okay, so the facility tour of the formulations, so it's around 10 minutes. Wi Fi is there, no? Okay. 
Any questions? deciding the dosage, the LD50, LC50 analysis is being done. So based on that, we'll take a call on like, what is the dose limit? When we do toxic studies, so the dosage is a compulsory. Hope you understood. Uh, if there is any doubt, even later also, you can uh, pass on to the request to ma'am. So that always I will be in touch. Maybe anytime you can visit the industry uh, if time permits. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the right and the relevant information according to the topic. Uh, we only just giving call for our students who are listening to this and for those who want to be the entrepreneur in the digital industry. And uh, you have clearly explained how to identify, characterize, and uh, to any nutraceutical product. We have learned so much today. Thank you so much. Thanks for accepting our invitation, sir. I request our Adhirata Madam to honor us, sir.
For the next talk, I would like to welcome Dr. Muhananda, founder of Maitreya Herbal Research Institute. He sir has started the company in the year 2022. He is a former professional with a directorate in pharmaceutical sciences at the start of And Dr. Murda Nibun, he has a decent knowledge in herbal dietary supplements, food supplements, natural health products, and complementary medicines. He is proficient. this many number of people and the uh, interest you have on the uh, nutritional field. Uh, first, I would like to thank the management, PAMS, and uh, the department uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my uh, thoughts uh, in this uh, forum. So, I would like to talk on the lifestyle uh, disorders and the role of uh, nutraceuticals. Uh, Madam has already told about uh, me. I would like to talk uh, about uh, Micre Herbal Research Institute before uh, starting this. Uh, this is a very uh, small proprietary ship firm. Uh, I have started just uh, one month back after um, resigning my job uh, recently. And I started a new journey of entrepreneurship. Uh, I uh, the hope I have is the experience I got from the previous company and my education. So with that, I have started this. And I provide scientific services for the herbal industries, basically, uh, in the name of Micra Herbal Research Institute. Uh, the content which we are going to uh, see in this uh, presentation is uh, We talk about energy lifestyle, but before going to that, let's talk about what is healthy lifestyle. 
and how to maintain a healthy lifestyle and unhealthy lifestyle, lifestyle disorders, managing the uh, neurological score, uh, different uh, diseases like uh, diabetes, cardiovascular health, and other conditions. Uh, just a small distinction uh, uh, I would like to give uh, between uh, disorder and and they were taking high amount of uh, means low quantities of whole grains. So low quantities of whole grains, low quantities of uh, fruits and high amount of sodium salt. These three were considered to be major factor in the lifestyle disorder. Uh, and this uh, factor constitutes uh, such a big way that no other diseases, means no other uh, even smoking does not come near to this. The risk factor of uh, smoking uh, causing disease does not come to this. So, what is it is the suboptimal diet is a major factor in um, creating a lifestyle disorder. Okay, and lifestyle disorders actually is a subset of non-communicable diseases. We have we have about non-communicable disease and communicable disease. Communicable disease means infectious disease like COVID-19, spread from one person to another person uh, due to infection, uh, likewise. Non-communicable disease means it doesn't communicate uh, directly, um, uh, like diabetes, cardiovascular health. If I if I am getting diabetic, it is linked to me only. From me, it will not uh, go to somebody else. So it's called non-communicable diseases. Lifestyle disorders becomes is a subset of non-communicable diseases, OK? Uh, because uh, the non-communicable diseases uh, factors may be environmental or um, uh, diet or uh, lifestyle, whatever it may be, different, different things. Lifestyle disorders means it pertains only to the lifestyle, not the environment. So uh, they have given uh, the optimal uh, requirements. You can see the fruits 250 grams per day uh, to be taken by an adult 
every day. Are we taking 250 grams per day fruits? And the sodium salt should not be more than uh, 3 grams. Uh, max, it can go to 5 grams per day. And uh, likewise, uh, whole grains is very important, uh, 125 grams per day. So, are we taking all these uh, things every day? Maybe? And apart from that, we also need to ensure that total fat should not be more than 30 percent as per WHO. And it should not, the saturated fat should not be uh, more than 10 percent. And likewise, they have given. How do you know that the food we take uh, is having uh, enough nutrition, nutrition or not? Uh, whenever you go, nowadays uh, we all go and purchase food directly, processed food, packed foods. You can see the nutritional fact information. We can see that everything is placed in the label. Uh, how much fat is present, how much carbohydrate is present, protein is present. Based on that, you will come to know whether you need to choose that food or not. Likewise, we can take a call. Okay. Uh, we have talked about uh, healthy lifestyle. Among the healthy lifestyle, uh, we saw that healthy diet is the most important thing. And apart from healthy lifestyle, we need to have physical activities. Okay, uh, physical healthy diet is there, but no physical activities. Then it's a uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult for us to maintain a healthy life. Uh, okay, what are those physical activities? the major factors in the physical activity. Some physical activities uh, will improve your strength. Some physical activity will improve your suppleness. Some physical activity will improve your stamina. So what physical activity will improve one uh, category, what beneficial effects? That's what's only the gap here. And number one means no uh, beneficial effect. Number two means also it's not adequate. Number three is very good, uh, like that. So you can see the key, uh, key there. Two is beneficial effect, uh, three is very good, and four is excellent. Swimming is the best um, uh, physical activity. It gives all almost means now all the uh, like strength, stamina, and also suppleness. <laughs> Here you can see this uh, uh, home or means housework model. Uh, people say that I am doing housework. Uh, should I need to do exercise? You can see from this. Uh, the stamina you get is just one and it's no real effect and also the strength is also very less and of course some suppleness, the flexibility, suppleness means the flexibility with which you can uh, do any activity that is suppleness. So uh, we can choose any of these physical activities to improve our strength or stamina or suppleness. So now um, opposite of healthy lifestyle is unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, unhealthy lifestyle, the major factor as we have seen, uh, unhealthy diet. Unhealthy diet means uh, low in uh, good nutrients, high in bad nutrients. Like we have said, uh, high sodium intake and low whole grain insane intake, like that. So, and then physical inactivity. Uh, uh, it's hardly nowadays we don't uh, uh, walk. Like earlier, we used to go walking. I mean, it's a part of natural part of our life. Nowadays, we take a bike. Uh, car, uh, like this, what is hardly done. Uh, maybe students may be doing, but once you move out from student stage to um, working stage, uh, you, everyone will face that. So, uh, that is uh, physical inactivity is the next uh, factor. Then, smoking uh, is uh, also causing and drinking alcohol, poor stress management. And nowadays, we hear that uh, stress uh, word more, and that word itself is causing stress to us and poor sleeping habits. So what are the lifestyle disorders? Uh, as I said, like disorders and disease, we use it interchangeably. And the major uh, thing is obesity. And second one, cardiovascular disease. It includes uh, cerebrovascular disease, like stroke and coronary heart disease and other uh, diseases, peripheral arterial disease, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism and cancer, respiratory disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, insomnia, and depression. These are insomnia means uh, lack of sleep or uh, taking too much time to go uh, fall asleep. How big is the problem? Lifestyle disorder. Is it very big? How big? So that's the question here. Again, I go back to the WHO, uh, World Health Organization and Non Communicable Disease uh, Fact Sheet, where they talk about globally about 70 70 71 percentage of all deaths. 
are because of non communicable diseases so it's a very huge uh, problem non communicable diseases and what are those diseases which ranks the first one you can see this cardiovascular disease this is the first one major uh, problem so if you want to make any means you want to start a business okay uh, you can see the potential here uh, if you develop a product for maintaining healthy uh, cardiovascular health then the scope is huge so likewise and uh, cancer the second one third one is respiratory disorders and fourth one is diabetes of course this is a global uh, worldwide scenario if you want to develop a product for india uh, that scenario may be slightly different so accordingly you can do the market research and uh, start thinking about what product you wanted to develop uh, what new drastically you wanted to develop like and then uh, in india as a uh, here deaths due to non communicable diseases has increased from 37 percentage in 1990 to around 62 percentage in 2016 so um, it's uh, um, almost double you can see uh, various factors would have been involved uh, including the lifestyle um, factors so i am just touching upon uh, two other uh, uh, factor which will be uh, which is impacting the uh, health smoking you can see the uh, death caused due to smoking is one in five deaths in the us uh, this data is from us uh, because this is the data i got and uh, uh, we always try to emulate or follow uh, american or european like this no so when we follow like that we also go and fall into the same uh, path uh, they are getting same kind of diseases now that we will go get the same kind of diseases maybe after 10 years or something so it's also important for us to understand what happens in other countries as well so death uh, like we can say that uh, 20 percentage uh, death due to smoking and lung cancer about 90 percentage of all lung cancer deaths uh, is due to smoking and more women die from lung cancer each year than from breast cancer Uh, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, about 80 percentage of all deaths are due to this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and smokers are 1 to 13 times um, have it higher risk. So that's why you can see the insurance companies uh, charge more for smokers than the non-smokers. And then coronary heart uh, heart disease and stroke. Uh, the risk is increasing by 25 percentage for smokers. and diabetes the risk uh, 30 to 40 percentage uh, for smokers and it's harder for women to become pregnant if they are smoking and also for men to um, reproduce uh, uh, reproduce with capacity and then uh, women uh, past child bearing years were smoke a uh, weaker bones so it also affects bones uh, almost all the information which i am presenting today is uh, everyone is aware of it but i am just giving here just to give an orientation so that at least we start uh, some day like better late than never that that was objective here uh, then there is impact of drinking alcohol you can see world by 3 million deaths every year result from harmful use of alcohol so these statistics are very useful for industries based on these statistics only they develop the products say smoking is more okay some companies will come out with a um, ways to stop smoking How how can I develop a chewing gum that will make people to stop smoking? How can I make a product that that will make people to stop drinking? So these are not just uh, data is money nowadays. You know, like wherever we go, every everywhere data uh, is very important, and we know the growth of data is like this. So liver cirrhosis. I mean, thirteen point five percent of total deaths in the age group twenty to thirty nine years are because of alcohol. And the liver cirrhosis, pancreatic disease, cancer, high blood pressure, and psychological disorders. These are all taken from the World Health Organization um, and also other um, important government websites. So these data have high value impact. So now, how to manage the uh, lifestyle uh, disorders? Um, as I said, like uh, if you follow a healthy lifestyle, you can definitely have a means you can manage your lifestyle disorders and uh, nutraceuticals and then if you don't follow healthy lifestyle means uh, and then you don't 
take neurological has been required uh, you if you end up with your disease then you take medicines uh, and then combination of any of these things will be useful that's how we can manage uh, the lifestyle disorders so what is neurological uh, technically neurological means uh, nutrition means nutrients we can say uh, all the essential nutrients macro micro nutrients all those things are packed in the pharmaceutical form so nutrients packed in the pharmaceutical form like capsule tablets are, are called as neurological that's a technical definition uh, although the regulations may have different definitions and this is from the uh, indian regulatory perspective what is meant by neurological uh yeah yes yes ai food safety standards uh, act uh, our authority uh, they have given this food safety standards act 2006 they define food for special dietary users or functional foods or nutraceuticals or health supplements as foods these are all foods which are specifically processed or formulated to satisfy particular dietary requirements okay these are uh, specifically processed to satisfy particular dietary requirement. they are not food itself they are to, meant to supplement the food then composition of nutraceuticals may differ it may contain plants substances it may contain mineral substances it can contain uh, vitamins uh, or substances of animal origin anything can go into uh, nutraceuticals as per the regulations and as i said earlier it's uh, meant to it's not a substitute for food it's a supplement add on to the food because we know that uh, not all of us are taking the home food and uh, uh, processed food we know that could be differentiation uh, differences in the nutrients content and also also um, we know that the amount of food we take also is getting reduced nowadays so it's very difficult for us to maintain the uh, adequate quantity of nutrition only through food so it is essential to take some nutraceuticals depending upon the need so as i said uh, this is again uh, uh, showing the need for nutraceuticals you can see the right hand side graph where um, micronutrient deficiency prevalence in india is given vitamin d you know there are many products containing uh, vitamin d formulations vitamin d and calcium so the reason is because vitamin d deficiency is more prevalent in india and then uh, iron vitamin b12 folic acid these all data helps uh, industry to develop products specifically and uh, we as a consumer need to take as and when required it's not that uh, something is good uh, we can take no if it is uh, if you are feeling that you need to take it you take it uh, or you check the status nutrition status and if you are deficient in this particular vitamin then you take it so role of nutraceuticals basically uh, meant to supplement the diet which should not be used for the treatment of any disease um, and uh, it should not be used as a replacement for healthy lifestyle. Uh, these are the things we have seen about uh, neurosticals. Now, uh, moving on to uh, neurosticals for different uh, health conditions. Uh, this neurosticals uh, for different health conditions data uh, presented here is based on the clinical studies. And not just one clinical study, but meta-analysis of many clinical studies. Uh, it's a collective information, scientific evidence, processed and presented in publications, and from the, those things we have taken in. So uh, these are not just uh, told, these are tested and then presented here, uh, uh, presented in the publication that is captured uh, in this slide. Uh, systemic inflammation. I mean, we all know about the inflammation. Inflammation is the uh, major um, process that happens inside the body uh, to combat all kinds of diseases. Um, anything um, outside uh, organism or something comes inside the body, first thing the body utilizes is to uh, create the inflammation. Basically, the inflammation is created to destroy the uh, antigens or the exogenous substances which are harmful to the body. But what happens sometimes uh, the inflammation gets becomes uncontrolled and it also affects the host cells. So that's where we need to take anti-inflammatory substances. And this inflammation is central to all kinds of diseases and uh, it also includes cardiovascular health. So um, we can see some anti-inflammatory substances here that have been clinically studied, uh, even in meta-analysis they have given. 
these substances like omega-3 fatty acids present in fish oil, uh, DHA and EPA, and red yeast, rice, uh, curcumin, soy, garlic, berberin, omega-6 fatty acids. All these have known to have cardiovascular health benefits. Uh, to know more about what particular cardiovascular health benefits, you can go to the reference listed here. So anybody who wants to develop products for cardiovascular health, we can take uh, well-researched uh, ingredients like this and develop a formulation out of it. So nutraceuticals to reduce the risk of cancer. Uh, similarly, uh, vitamin D3, folate, vitamin B6, beta carotene, a curcumin uh, along with piperine and sulfur, uh, sulforaphene uh, and uh, indole 3 cardinal quercetin. Like here, I have listed uh, phytochemical actives present in the plant and the plant as well, depending upon the evidences available. So you can see a mixture of uh, isolated phytocompounds and also of plants uh, as well and vitamins. So these compounds uh, and substances have uh, the cancer risk reducing potential. Uh, similarly, these have like vitamin B uh, is good for respiratory health. And when I say respiratory health, it involves uh, two things majorly, COPD and asthma, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma. The major uh, uh, way we can reduce the respiratory uh, health problem is uh, just by reducing the smoking or completely stopping the smoking because that is a major risk factor for respiratory problems, basically the non-communicable uh, disease. Then nigella sativa and selenium also has uh, the potential. Uh, one thing is the specific nutritional support. People who have respiratory health problems, if they are given a specific nutritional support, specific means they have to be analyzed for their deficiencies and given um, a specific formulated food, then uh, they seem to have a better uh, improvement in terms of their respiratory health. Then for diabetes, magnesium, almond-based uh, diet, oats, uh, dietary fiber, and vitamin D. These have been clinically uh, studied uh, and proven to have health benefits for the management of diabetes. Conclusive remarks is basically a healthy diet, uh, physical activity, sleep, and avoiding smoking and drinking alcohol are all great ways to maintain good health. Healthy diet plays a major role in reducing the risk of lifestyle disorders. Nutraceuticals are not a replacement for healthy lifestyle, uh, but they can help reduce the risk. So, uh, and in nutraceuticals, there are not only vitamins and minerals, but also uh, herbal substances as well. When it comes to taking vitamins and minerals, uh, you ensure if you really need it or not, and then you can take it. But when it comes to these nutraceuticals, check for herbal based nutraceuticals, check for the clinical evidences, whether they are clinically. Uh, study ingredients or not, they have clinical backup or not, and also the quality of uh, ingredient that goes into the nutraceuticals and the quality of whole formulation is uh, very important as well because we know that uh, uh, everyone cooks uh, uh, idli, okay, not all idli is prepared in home uh, are the same, it's different. Same way, uh, everyone prepares nutraceuticals formulations, it all depends upon the manufacturer and there's a kind of quality control process, uh, like they say, you know, GMP in manufacturing and GLP in testing and uh, uh, GCP in clinical uh, practice. So whether all these things are sticky practice or not, then we need to go and purchase a um, reliable uh, neutral sticker. So with this, I conclude my uh, presentation and thanks for the management. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask. Any questions? Any questions related to herbal field? Uh, you can ask. Or you can also write uh, email.
Sir, you have mentioned about Nigeria Sataka. So, like, how it is used and I wanted to what it is. Uh, thanks for asking this, but I need to go through the uh, literature. It's taken from the public domain. Um, we can take, uh, go to the publication reference and we need to identify what is the extract specifically used, whether it is water extract, methanol extract, or alcohol extract, and whether it is standardized or not standardized, what is the dose, all those things we need to research. And then uh, we need to see how it is prepared and how it needs to be standardized. And accordingly, we have to go. Uh, this presentation was prepared as an overview, not an in-depth thing. We need a separate uh, presentation for Nigel now. Uh, most of the time, how uh, these products are developed, uh, according to me, uh, because I have, I mean, during my uh, working at a company for 10 years, my job was to, in the beginning and in the end and with the customers. In the middle, I will review the information. Uh, to be very clear, I used to do literature search. Uh, my job is to identify the plants uh, for a specific health benefits. Uh, as a part of new product development. Uh, so that one and do some preliminary phytochemical uh, uh, screening and uh, setting the specification for the uh, ingredients, what, what active constants should be present at what level, all those things. And then in the end, I come and uh, convert the scientific studies. I also plan some studies uh, and uh, support R&D. And then uh, what we do is, uh, the scientific study reports will be there. Uh, scientific studies, uh, we can't directly uh, communicate to the customers. It needs to be converted into easily uh, observable form so, uh, so that a layer person can also understand. So that was the job I was doing, converting the scientific technical reports into easily understandable uh, presentations. Uh, so product promotional, so as part of that, and I was doing. So this is how uh, we used to do. So we do from the literature search and then we end with the uh, product with supporting materials for promoting your products, uh, presentations, flyers, uh, or, or in fact videos like this. That's how uh, it's done. We can't uh, jump directly into taking one plan, formulating and sealing. Uh, means we can't do like that. Thanks for asking this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful presentation. And I must admit that our students uh, were definitely, they might have listened to your words. And you have motivated our students to be physically active. I don't know how many of you here are physically active. How many of you are doing exercises? If not, please start from tomorrow. If you manage your uh, uh, stress and if you do your physical activity and if you eat a balanced lifestyle, definitely you can uh, prevent many of your lifestyle disorders. And hope sir also insisted the same. And uh, thank you sir, thanks for accepting our invitation and thanks for being with us today. And I request our Dr. Anuradha Madam to honor sir by giving the memento. Before uh, moving to the next speaker, please give me two minutes.
Yes, we can move on to the next video. For the next talk, I would like to welcome Dr. Bhavana, renal nutritionist, St. John's Hospital of Bangalore. Ma'am, please welcome. Dr. Bhavana completed her bachelor's in non master's in dietetics and food service management from BHD College of Home Science, and PhD specialized in renal nutrition from BHD Self College of Home Science, Bangalore. She is working right now in St. John's Hospital from the year 2000 in various positions. She updated herself in her field uh, to mention few like a diabetes educator and basics of BMA sports nutrition from Center for Nutrition and Integrated Health and uh, sports nutritionist from the IAPEN. She was the recipient for gold medal for the year 1999 during her post graduation. She awarded the best poster presentation at the 31st Annual Conference of Indian Society for Nephrology. Southern chapter held in February 2015. She was the guest teaching faculty for many reputed institutions, including Padmashri College and BSG Santi College of Home Science. She published many of her papers in international and uh, national journals. She is a member in professional bodies also. On behalf of my institute, I heartily welcome Dr. Bhavana for the next topic titled Life Cycle Nutrition and Nutraceuticals. It's over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I think some morning we've been having a long headed session on the classical course. Uh, relax. What we are undergoing only is the teacher I will be talking about. So you can relax, sit back, but it should be informative. Okay. Uh, now I will be talking about life cycle nutrition and nutraceuticals. This nutraceuticals became evident in this pandemic, correct? Immunity boosters, vitamin tablets, mineral supplements, all this. Now, how many of you were popping up all kinds of supplements during this pandemic? Most of them would be taking vitamin tablets. You are worried about the virus contracting you, not about your health. Correct? The virus should not contract you. And, and because of this lockdown, you are locked inside the house with so many hangar happening in the house. Your mother, First, no need drink this lime water. Correct? Most of you will have this experience because I had myself too, but still I contracted the virus. <laughs> because we work in a hospital, so hospital acquired infections will be there, definitely. Okay, now moving on to the topic. Now let's learn what is human life cycle. The human body const constantly develops and changes throughout the human lifespan. The major stages of the human life cycle includes pregnancy, infancy, toddler years, childhood, puberty, older adolescence, adulthood, middle age, and senior years. You would have crossed half of this by now. 
Proper nutrition and exercise ensure health and wellness at each stage of human life cycle. Now let's know what is life cycle nutrition. You just grade yourself to which picture you belong to also along with the slide. It involves the study of special nutritional needs, physiological and health concerns at different stages of human life. It concentrates on nutritional requirements and intake, mainly for the pregnant and the more demanding years, that is pregnancy and lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and older adults, for whom we call it as senior citizens. Now, our diet comprises mainly of nutrients, which can be categorized as macronutrients and micronutrients, which you're all aware of. Macronutrients occupies more space on our plate, which con uh, concentrates on carbohydrates, fats, and protein, while minerals and supplements are moved into as micronutrients, and even on our plate, it is moved in as micronutrient only. But to our surprise, vitamins and minerals are essential for humans to try. Very, very important. That's why we were popping up all kinds of vitamin tablets during the pandemic. Vitamins. Sorry. To test this. Sorry. Now, this slide tells about the importance of diet and nutrients required at different stages of life to compensate, uh, to uh, uh, give you that kind of activity during that age period. Now, let's know what are nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals, as you had earlier sessions, is derived from nutrition and pharmaceuticals. They are nutritional products used as medicine in this medicine world. The name was coined in 1989 by Stephen Deppelis, founder and chairman of the Foundation for Innovation in Medicine, 
an American organization located in New Jersey. Now, nutraceuticals are products derived from food sources with extra health benefits in addition to the basic nutritional value found in foods. They can be considered as non-specific biological therapies used to promote general well-being, control symptoms, and prevent malignant processes happening in the body. Now, the, as I told you earlier, the nutraceuticals became popular in this pandemic and it was found to be successful also in combating and managing the corona, the corona or COVID-19 virus. The nutraceuticals, which acts as a preventive medical approach, is, works in combination with nutrition, which is required for health, along with pharmaceutical, which is a remedy for sickness. Now, nutraceuticals are available from the common foods and can be categorized as dietary fibers, prebiotics, probiotics, polyunsaturated fatty acids, antioxidants, and other different types of herbal or natural foods. Now, this is a slide to make you aware about the availability of nutraceuticals from our natural foods, which we can consume regularly in our daily diet. Now, as told earlier, nutraceuticals has combined effect for health promotion and disease prevention. Let's talk about health promotion. Because of its beneficial effects, they have abundance amount of antioxidants, which helps in mitochondrial biogenesis, biogenesis, stem cell growth, and prolonging life span of a person, and gives good health to your system, including gastrointestinal health, renal and excretory health, reproductive system. Now, moving on to the disease prevention, the chronic diseases can be, so the effect of occurrence of the chronic disease can be controlled by the use of nutraceuticals, and the disease prevention can be grouped as cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, arthritis, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, eye disorders, and stress management. The nutraceuticals can prevent and manage chronic diseases. A few of them which are associated with the diseases are omega-3 fatty acids for cardiovascular disease, glucosamine for inflammatory disorders, creatinine. Creatinine can control Parkinson's disease. Dietary fibers is very good to control obesity. Beta carotene for Alzheimer's disease, soya protein, it helps in the management and prevention of occurrence of diabetes. Lycopene or tea prevents the occurrence of cancer. Now, nutritional supplements are nutritional compounds that supplements one's diet by increasing total daily intake. Now, nutritional supplements contain substances as alone or in combination with vitamins and minerals with or without herbal products or zoo chemicals or probiotics. Nutraceuticals and nutrition supplements are collectively referred as dietary supplements. A dietary supplement represents a product that contains nutrients derived from food products and is available in the market in liquid, capsule, powder, or pill forms. They, they are regulated by Drugs Controller General of India for the Indian market, and for the US market, it is regulated by US FDA, that is United States Food and Drug Administration. Now, this is the slide uh, to show the commercially available nutraceuticals or dietary supplements. Now, dietary supplements has many health benefits. I list them down to you. They reduce aging. They give protection from cardiovascular disease. They act as immune modulators. They provide or improve reproductive health and maintenance of bone mineral density and joint functioning. They improve cognitive functioning and reduce the risk of cancer.
Now, plants, nutraceuticals, nutritional supplements, dietary supplements for pain, you will be wondering about another compound called as functional foods. Functional foods are foods that have a potential positive effect on health beyond basic nutrition. They are rich in antioxidants and they promote optimal health by neutralizing harmful compounds known as free radicals, which prevents cell damage and reduces the risk of onset of certain chronic diseases. Now, these are the functional foods which can be consumed on a regular basis from our natural sources. Now, the functional foods are available commercially as conventional foods, fortified or enriched foods, and dietary supplements. This is a slide to show which are naturally available and which can be incorporated in a now let's know the difference between functional foods and nutraceuticals. They are available, functional foods are available as naturally occurring bioactive compounds in the food, such as beta carotene, lycopene, etc. And nutraceuticals are available as bioactive compounds. in the form of pills, capsules, or liquids, both with disease prevention and medicinal values. Regular diet, we can get neutrosities that increase the antioxidant level in cultures, gives you the effect of pro omega-3 fatty acids, C to control obesity and associate Share. Sorry about the introductions. Now, the nutraceuticals in Indian market are available as functional foods and beverages in the form of fortified foods, health drinks, sports drink, energy drinks, and it's also available as dietary form supplements in the form of vitamins and mineral supplements, herbal supplements, protein supplements, and shaban grass. But looking into the safety and the health purpose of uh, the public, consuming the commercial uh, commercially available nutraceuticals, the International Regulatory Review Board has given certain regulations from the time of production until marketing to the companies which provide them to safeguard the health of the people who are consuming them. They, the food labels should provide or give nutrition information along with government approved certified marks. And the consumers who are purchasing these commercial products should be aware of these aspects and then procure them, uh, purchase them, and consume them. Key nutrients are needed. Obesity.
genetic factors, nutrient interactions, poor absorption, drugs and metabolic diseases like diabetes and hypertension may contribute deficiencies at individual levels. Now let's learn about the, the beginning of a life, at the time of life of that child, this thousand days, the overall development of the child or the life. Now let's learn about the importance of nutrition. Requirements for energy and micronutrients change throughout the life cycle. Due to the popularity and availability and due to convenience, everybody is having a preference for taking ready to eat fast junk foods, where there is increase in uh, energy, saturated fat, cholesterol, and refined carbohydrate food consumption, which can fuel the onset of epidemics like obesity and associated with that other common diseases. Of course, with higher intake of calories, there is insufficient intake of dietary fibers and micronutrients. The other prominent nutritional problems occur, occurring are overnutrition, energy and other macro, macronutrient intake, which can lead to obesity and other chronic diseases. Undernutrition is due to inadequate food intake or inavailability of absorption of adequate nutrients, which can lead to developmental problems. Hence, a nutritionally balanced diet is important for a healthy life and healthy living. I'm sure everybody must be hungry and you must be wondering what to eat next or what will be served next. Okay, so now uh, excess calorie intake is a risk factor common to all age groups. Okay, now overnutrition begins early. Whenever you're hungry, you have impulsive uh, fondle of certain foods which is not required or which is not suitable for you, but still you tend to. To put your hands on to those foods. So, prevent yourself from those compulsive overeating to prevent yourself from getting on to obesity or overweight. Now, let's learn about the impact of excess calorie intake at each life cycle stages. We'll start off with pregnancy and lactation. Weight gain during pregnancy varies by pre pregnancy, BMI, and also during pre trimesters. Excess energy intake may result in rapid weight gain, conferring on a greater risk for labor induction, cesarean section, high birth weight babies, and other complications during pregnancy and delivery. Because of excess calorie intake, there is inadequate intake of calcium, iron, folate, zinc, and vitamins like A and T. Failure to meet these increased requirement of micronutrients during pregnancy and lactation may increase risk for certain chronic diseases in the children in their future years. So during pregnancy, along with the proper diet, supplementation is very, very essential. Moving on to infants and children, it has been shown from the studies that breastfed infants are less likely to be overweight or obese during childhood or adolescence. Overfed infants and children may develop unpleasant dietary habits, which has risk for metabolic characteristics and have lifelong consequences. Added risk would be genetics and hormonal factors for childhood obesity and chronic diseases. Low birth weight infants are prone to infections, stunting growth and developmental issues and increased risk for adult chronic diseases. Lifestyle issues are predominant in childhood obesity where there is too little activity and too many calories from the foods and drinks. 
This childhood obesity will continue till adolescence and adulthood in some individuals. Now, there are many challenges which are related to early childhood and nutrition. The common nutritional problem includes failure to thrive, refusal of foods, food allergies and intolerances, iron deficiency anemia, and vitamin D deficiency, where the absorption or the procurement of nutrients is very, very minimal in these set of individuals. Now let's learn about the impact of unhealthy eating in adolescents. They are habitual to taking all kinds of junk food from childhood itself, so it cannot be very difficult to change it during the adolescence. So there is always there is consumption of higher amounts of fats, sodium, and sugars, which increases the risk for adult obesity in terms of risk. Taking these burgers, you may have an extra
menopausal women, iron recommendations are decreased. Plant sources of protein are preferred in the uh, later uh, uh, years so that it will be easy for them to absorb and digest with many other factors. Some elderly persons have difficulty getting adequate nutrition because of age associated or disease related impairments in chewing, swallowing, digesting and absorbing nutrients. Excess alcohol intake in elderly can cause sleep disorders, problematic interactions with medications, and loss of nutrients. There is a pyramid specially designed for older adults, and it specifies on the inclusion of different food groups in their regular diet to compensate the losses due to various reasons. Now, this is a graph to show the demand for the nutritional requirement at different life cycle stages needed by women from childhood till old age. It has been found from studies that micronutrients benefit women's health during childhood years, pregnancy and lactation, and aging years. Micronutrient adequacy will have an impact on the ability of the mother to provide optimal feeding and lactation after surgery, after delivery. The use of prenatal omega-3 fatty acids affects the quality of human milk after delivery, which can influence child's health. Prenatal and early pregnancy supplementation of micronutrients is necessary to minimize the risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes. Now let's learn about pregnancy with micronutrient sufficiency. Adequate folate will reduce the risk of congenital defects during preconception. Correction of iron reduces the level of pregnancy anemia and reduces pregnancy mortality. Correction of iodine inadequacy prevents subclinical iodine deficiency on infants and childhood cognitive development. Vitamin A supplementation improves maternal immunological protection and development of infant's immune system. Calcium and vitamin A D deep supplementation preserves maternal and fetal bone health. The demand and the challenges which a woman faces balancing the various life cycle stages needs the support of intake of adequate nutrition. It can be achieved safely through a consistent balanced intake of nutrient rich, including fortified foods and timely nutrient supplementation along with regular physical activity regimen. Let's look into the safety and efficacy of supplementation. Nutritional intervention should first include healthy foods along with supplements as a secondary role. Supplements should be used as a supplement, not as a substitute, is my saying. Most supplementary doses of micronutrients can prevent deficiency and support immune function, but hyper supplementation can have the opposite effect and result in immunosuppression, where no drugs can work on that individual. Some research findings report increased cancer risk with use of calcium supplements, example, prostate cancer in men and non hodgkin lymphoma in women. Risk may be specific to certain nutrition, and again, it depends on the individual and non-modifiable risk factors. To acquire micronutrients from food alone, we need to focus on certain factors. First, you have to focus on the food groups and not on single nutrients. Focus on amounts, give knowledge, and change the behavior. To focus on healthy weight and specifying about the portion sizes. To reduce the risk of high dose or the adverse interactions among the nutrients and sustainability of the approach should be emphasized. Now, depending on the food alone, we cannot suffice the micronutrient inadequacies. So there are many disadvantages advantages also, which I'm listing down, availability and accessibility, cost, 
interference by social cultural factors, specific micronutrients like iron and folate adequacies may be difficult to achieve only through food sources, which needs a supplementation there, decreased bioavailability with certain nutrients, and inadequate compliance to diet recommendations. In support with the use of supplementation, Kelly and her team did a study on life cycle micronutrient perspective for women's health who conferred saying that efforts are needed to improve diet quality, focusing on the diet as a whole and not on single vitamin or mineral. Concentration must be given to fortified foods and or, or in combination with supplements to ensure micronutrient adequacy. So an equal balance from diet and supplementation is required at each stage. Not to mention sports supplement is uh, in the line right now. All sports persons, athletes would be taking all kinds of supplements whether it is needed or not, but they would be put on certain sports supplements, even including in the gyms. So you need to be aware what to include, what not to include. We have the pyramid for the sports supplement pyramid, where two thirds of the pyramid, you should get the nutrients from your basic diet, and the rest one third is divided into two, two portions, for which you, would be, you can be prescribed sports specific nutrition and dietary supplements to depending on the event and the sports which that person would be undergoing. Last but not the least, immunonutrition, very, very important to manage and recover the patients who are in critical care in ICUs. Immunonutrition plays a very important role and nutraceuticals and supplementation helps them in the faster recovery and manage the disease. Now, there are certain factors to consider during the use of nutraceuticals. It should be evidence-based. Just as somebody has used it has worked for them, it may not work for you. So you should be very clinically evident on use of the nutraceuticals and the type of nutraceuticals and to which group of people it has been prescribed and allowed has to be taken care of. Now, we need to make a supplement decision chart the one who is prescribing and the one who would be consuming, especially it is involved in the sports nutrition. And the person who wants to take it or who is being prescribed, they should be very evident of using it and how it affects their body. So my question is commercial supplements, is it safe or unsafe? For different age groups, depending on the requirement, you can change. Let's sum up. Prevention is always better than cure. Always promote healthy lifestyle styles. The types of food we eat impacts our disease risk. Mindfulness and intentions affect all our behavioral characteristics, which includes what to eat, how to eat, when to eat. Always imagine your ideal plate, which is on the right hand side. Establish new habits to attain the goals which has been set by you. You are the best person who can fix the goal and try to make an attempt to achieve it. Lifestyle management very, very essential. Manage your I think your, mind, your hunger pants are on. Another hour to go. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any you are hungry 
Fancy word nutraceutical scope. Our ancestors have used enough in our cooking, right? Today, if we use it is available in almost all the groups that we have to choose wisely. And Madam have insisted that in her slides also. Yeah, thank you so much, Madam. Thanks for being with us today. And I request uh, Dr. Anuradha, Madam, to yeah. honor Madam, Dr. Anuradha, Madam. Uh, my car, my money around there. Zoom, please give me two minutes. Yeah, no, 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 ఏమంటారు <laughs> 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 చోప్రా ఏదో మాట చెప్తే నేను కొనుక్కునేది అట్లా I would like to invite Mr. Vain Gordon, SCB Technical Affairs Biogenio Private University. Mr. Vain Gordon Shanmugam, sir, after completion of his master's in organic chemistry, Worked in many industries in quality control section, including Sami Labs, Bio, 
Patinsa Corporation Agency USA as QC manager, and there he had the responsibility to develop, establish, and maintain quality assurance programs, policies, procedures, and controls ensuring that performance and quality of products conform to established standards and agency guidelines to ensure lasting customer satisfaction. Being the technical affairs professional with more than 22 years of experience in quality control and quality assurance and regulatory affairs, he has very good and proven knowledge. He has strong regulatory background in for many countries. He has some knowledge in quality assurance and in regulatory efforts for more than 22 years. So uh, we are so honored by your presence, sir. Please welcome. I have one at home like you, so I speak your language. Okay. So I don't know whether to say good afternoon or good morning. So I'll start. Namaste and Namaskar. Okay. So you guys are charged with need to take us from morning, right? I mean, I'm not going to torture you. So, <clears throat> so let us see some neurosurgical product development. I'll move to the presentation. So basically, lot of definitions given from morning. Okay. So I'm not going to give again and again more and more definitions to bore you. So originally, neurosurgical sort origin from food. And second is traditional system of medicine and mainly Ayurveda. Actually, uh, can be mineral or botanical or in combination of all amino acids, and providing nothing but bacteria. This is a very important slide. Actually, I'm going to differ from all of them. Because if those people in the world, why do you have a people and industry, not by any regulatory authorities worldwide, except on the FSS reason? They included our data subjects. If you see USFA regulation, you won't find the world interest with us at all. Rather, they need worldwide. In India, it's back from the US of Iran, neurosurgical. Food and functional food and novel food. In USA, these are the two categories dietary ingredients and dietary supplements. Ingredients means raw ingredients, supplements means capsule, tablet, it means those formulas. But in Canada, it's called natural milk product, in Japan, it's called functional foods. In Korea, it's in functional food, in Australia, it's called complementary meals. Whenever you're looking for any information in any country, so you have to uh, see that we have to look for the keyword class. So we can check the regulations. So it is on the disease conditions. Even the industry can have a wide range of applications. These are the top uh, in the top 20, in the top 20, first to start with allergy and Alzheimer's, second body was clear, cancer, diabetes, then eye disorders, back then. Uh, you need to start with the body for sports nutrition. Here are the top 20 neurosurgical conditions. This is a treatment condition. So, when the body talks, the body will only provide. Okay. Okay. 
the crops, etc. These are the things not allowed. Okay, whenever you use the word, what are the activities? First, you for two words, and again, you use the word, in India, there are the other interstitials based on the molecular system. So, most of the things uh, in India allow. Right? In Japan, most of these are not allowed. Anyone uh, with the background of Japan, guidelines. See, there are the other guidelines I just pointed out. I mean, I mentioned in the slide. What is the important difference between regulation and guidelines? This is very important. So, regulation is a law. Like in India, the road block is always keep left, right? What we do, we always keep right. Because we keep right, you know. <laughs> this is a joke, and it's wrong. So, I'll move to the next slide. Okay, so, law we must follow the guidelines will help you to reach there. That is very important. Can you make your own laws? Not possible. But in India, you can have your own laws. But in US, they won't allow you. And guidelines, whether you follow US pharmacopoeia or Indian pharmacopoeia, that's allowed in any countries. Provided you should be living in the justification. And one more important thing. Okay. In India, if you want to license a product, any, any product, you should go for licensing first. Uh, the biggest item in the US, there is no such kind of registration facility right. You believe it or not. Or we don't think about two products. No registration system or licensing system is not available. You can only remove the product, you can sell next day. But something wrong with the product will be done. Simple law. So, highly regulated market, you cannot market on your own, which is not going to us. One thing that you see in the US, the weather is in the negative list. If it is in the negative list, you should not think about that particular animal or botanical or mineral or any sort of form. Otherwise, you can uh, formulate your own product, you can sell next day in the uh, market. No one is going to ask you. You will know what color it is, what no one is going to ask you, no one is going to worry about it. And most of the regulations worry about what do you mean about it? Not very good. In the US FDA, they won't even recognize your claim. You should not make any claim. That means you cannot really proceed because it is not that is the case. So in this case, you have to be very careful to follow the law, not the guy. I like. So these are the important worldwide regulatory authorities. See, what my perspective always, you know, why I'm emphasizing moral relations. First question I ask always myself, is it allowed? Simple. If it is not allowed, don't spend time on it. Is it allowed? First question in the product, if you not give us help, is it allowed? Which country is it allowed? If it is not allowed, uh, I think of like can use the authority tomorrow. You cannot win because fighting with regulatory authorities is nothing but fighting with the capital. You never ever win in your life. Okay. So <clears throat> again, you know, you should worry about not ban, not ban the herbal solvents. Solvents are very important in herbal extracts. Okay. So each country they have their own uh, solvent regulations. Uh, and residual solvents. Okay, the solvent most of the countries allow them ethanol as extraction solvent without any questions. Uh, it doesn't mean that you know, uh, a nitrosudical there is one in India, Kerala, that is Arisha, right? The solvent base. that is not allowed in US for any um, Next standardization and standardizing methods and specification. Definitely, you should know what you are going to manufacture it or what you are going to. I mean, and uh, vitamins, no restrictions to use vitamins. Um, I'll tell you one thing. In India, uh, you have developing a product with herbal extract and antivitamins. You go to drug control department, they say it is having herbal extract, go to Ayush department. When you are going to Ayush department, this is a story about 10 years before. Go to Ayush department, they say there is a synthetic vitamin that you allow. So they have to go. So finally, Irish they formed it, and then they allowed anything is in pharma, a pharmacopoeia, Indian pharmacopoeia, as an ingredients or vitamins or minerals, you can use it in different processes. 
So that's what finally they pay, they change the law. So anything is in the uh, exhibition, anything is allowed in Indian pharmacopoeia. Yeah, you can use now. There is uh, previously in India, all food and neurosurgeons control with prevention of the adult disease. How they change it to everything, the FSSI. In FSSI, concentrated food ingredients is allowed. If you do not consume food, they will ask you to go to the Irish department. For cosmetic, if you are using natural herbal cosmetic, the license should get from in India, uh, from the control department. Whether you have used herbal or synthetic, only uh, the control department will approve the cosmetic use. Even the neighboring countries like Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, everywhere, you know, there is a registration domain. You have to go to approach regulatory authorities, submit technical dossier, and you know, all toxicities required. Everything, but in US, you know, there is no such registration system available. Please remember this. What you have to look is solvent regulation. US people are very generous. There is no restrictions on solvent salts. You can use any solvent provided. Uh, if the residual level should be, uh, I mean, residual level should be USP 467. There is nothing but ICH guidelines you can see. Now, minerals, you know, again, you know, uh, minerals also, which form is allowed, like sodium selenide or sodium selenide, you know, organic, you can see, uh, uh, I mean, copper lysinate or something, with more like killing, killing that is done, mostly used in our industry, uh, no metal mercury salts, right? In herbal extract, uh, the definition itself says, you know, when they are talking about herbal extract, any herbal, except the one. Keep in that mind, the bottle is not, even though it's a carefully, it is not allowed. <laughs> this is the federal chemical. See, always look for indication, right? When you are developing first, you should ask yourself, is it allowed? Can we move to the next? Yeah. This one? Okay, what conditions I am going to develop? See, that's what I listed. How can you see? Now, uh, the, the neurological industry is, is changed a lot in the last two years because of, you know, a uh, lot, of, lot of chaos, I can say. A lot of issues because of the COVID the industries and you know they suffered a lot, a lot of things. So the perspective of the theater hospital by the people and by the industry is slowly changing. Everyone talks about stress, everyone talks about immunity. You know, how the American for industry you do anything with immunity, anything you say that you know, you have to improve immunity, definitely you are the winner. That is the situation is going on now. Previously, it was obesity. Okay, obesity, lot of, lot of also a lot of discuss about obesity. The obesity is the biggest problem in US. I can see that when I was in 2002 or 2003, I can see 10 kids out of 2 kids were obese at the time. Now, 10, 8 kids out of 10 kids are obese when I walk in the streets. Or particularly, if you go into any shopping and all. Always, particularly the minority community, the African Americans, are suffering with like anything. What they say is because of the sodium content, addictive, you know. Keep on eating and then buffet. Oh, Americans known for eating. So big, big buffet. Right? Buffalo meat, like in you know, a slab. You can see, like, you know, two by two, they eat. Two feet by two feet. That's what they say. The steak or everything. Anyway. So, phytochemicals. So, again, I go back to the slide. See, look for the phytochemicals, proper phytochemicals. Either a group of phytochemicals or single phytochemicals. So which one, which disease condition you are going to uh, develop in university? Like product? Again, I'm telling you, you should know the clients are allowed. See, for example, anti-cancer. Anti-cancer, the word obesity you can use, uh, but psoriasis cannot be used as an indication. So there are certain restrictions. What we do, you cannot use anti-cholesterol, the body will draw the What we do, healthy lipid metabolism. Simple. The very shallow bother about your body activities. They worry only about the toxicity. So how much is too much? How to decide whether it's toxic? There are studies available. As for the way it is, let's say look for sodium.
So I'll give an example. Yeah, anyone? Okay. Closely. Even the idea of potential chip size, you are splitting some human action. Can you explain it? Is that clear? Marketing are only potential chip, putting a nice map, 90% yeah, 10% potential chip. Right? Then it is called food. When you are splitting on the top with turmeric extract or whatever you make, so it will be allowed extract, except with the water extract, then it will be a you know. See, these are the other things. See, when you are formulating, I keep it that in mind. Most of the phytochemicals have a you know, lack of therapeutic effects and benefits because of a low bioavailability. Because most of the phytochemicals, most of them are not soluble in water. And you know, uh, the intestine permeability is very low. And, and secondly, it goes first post metabolism. It won't get absorbed at all. So the, the area is now a lot of companies are looking for upper soluble phytochemicals. So you can, you know, there are like some preparations or uh, formulated the PEGs. There are several, you know, the cyclodextin complex you can formulate, missile, missile formation. There are several work going on in that one. Uh, yeah, herbals enriched with uh, minerals. That's another, you know, some companies are focusing main only this kind of product. It enriched vitamins also, enriched minerals also in the herbals. Okay, global market is over 130 billion according to the allied market business. A lot of money. So, formulation is definitely very nice. And uh, remuneration also, you know, in uh, Then it's expected to uh, grow 650 billion worldwide. It's a research uh, article published. Because in the Indian scenario, it's definitely numbers are you know, uh, growing a lot. So there is always a scope for improvement. There is always scope for improvement. That means there is always a scope for new products, new product developments. So young minds can clearly think of something new. Um, uh, something uh, new, you know, think of new products. Read a lot that we won't do anyway. Ah, I first ask one question. How many of them watch Money Heist? You are. Many guys. If they come on, yeah, if people are older like me, you should watch this guy. Money Heist, okay. Speak here, right? Okay. So I thought at least 90% people will answer for the Money Heist because the youngsters. Wherever you go, a lot of people, you know, professor, professor, professor. The world is very famous. You can't believe, even in the shows, like they are going exhibition. People are talking about money, guys. Speak game. The speak game, that fellow, the, in the US, like, you know, the visa officer, the consular officer, got an autograph from the guy. <laughs> so funny. Usually, you know, they won't, uh, the, particularly in the border. When you are crossing, when you are going to US border, right after the flight, is, they ask a lot of questions that you are purpose of visit and all. They usually, usually, no personal benefits or personal gain is actually fine. Yeah, an immigration officer is asking personally, means that is a crime there. But even one uh, immigration officer took an autograph from the Spigian hero. It was big news in, you know, even in New York Times. Anyway, so you come to the point. Uh, Neurosimple product starts with a country specific regulation. Which country, which indication? Uh, regulatory means mainly look for solvents, uh, physical contaminations like other patients. Uh, identity, purity, and strength method. Always follow the pharmacopoeia. See, pharmacopoeia is the safest way to analyze a product, and pharmacopoeia, pharmacopoeia methods are the safest methods to convince the regulatory authorities. Thanks. Any questions? Questions only from this slide, not on money next hour. Speak again. See your point. I'm going to ask something now. Why is I is something? Can anyone tell why is I is blue? Huh? What's the effect called? 
Bangalore man, Bangalore got a Nobel Prize for that from IAS, Raman effect. So, expert something, something has. So, hope I kept my promise that I didn't touch you guys because I know. I, nowadays, you know, last three years, I stopped giving advice to the people <laughs> because my daughter stopped boring me that. So I stopped it, but I want to give some advice because I cannot help myself. <laughs> so, one thing as an young professional is like what we are expecting in the industry. First is what command and English. No one is going to tell you about that. Always read, always read about related to the industry. The third important thing is, you know, uh, the diet and the exercise. I thanks to Dr. Rana. It's very important and, you know, that's what I told you. Three, always be active. See, uh, exercise is very important. After 50, also you can perform. A lot of people after 50 they get tired and diet mainly. What you should know what should what not to eat or what to eat. So that's very important. And lastly, whenever you are buying any packets, any packets, potato chips packet, at least read the panel, madam. So very clear. Read the panel. It is having cholesterol. It is having. Carbohydrates, sugars, proteins, read the label before you eat. I'll challenge you guys, you start reading the label, right? You slowly quit all the bad the junk foods. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks for the uh, Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your passion. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. In a short period of time, you have given a lot of information. And especially, it's a challenge for the speakers who are taking uh, lectures pre and post lunch. Uh, we know the teacher is very tough. But uh, today, really, you have one, and uh, students are listening to your talk at home. The, because the information what you gave us in an uh, efficient way, really, was wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. And thanks for accepting our invitation. And and I request the chairman, Mr. Sapisa, to facilitate our member dancer. students, we are expecting lunch by 12.45. Please be here. The breakout sessions will start by 1.30 exactly. We are expecting all of the students to be here. We need your cooperation and uh, don't plan to uh, catch the bus by 1.30. We have taken the attendance already for Saturday from your class teachers and today also we will do the same. Please be here. Stay here and have your lunch and I'll take up here by 1.30. Thank you.